Hello, here we are at Advent of Code 2021, day 17. Down here at the bottom of the ocean, it seems we finally escaped this horrible cave. Uh, if you don't know why, we're going to the bottom of the ocean through a cave. I got a whole 16 previous videos from this year that will explain it, and also the description on this YouTube video will tell you everything you need to know. Let's get started. All right, day 17, trick shot, trick shot. You finally decode the elves' message. Hi, it says. You continue searching for the keys. <laughs> Ahead of you is what appears to be a large ocean trench. Ah, that's what we saw on the previous screen there. Uh, could the keys have fallen into it? You bet they did. You better send a probe. Uh-oh, <laughs> probes. <laughs> Uh, the probe launcher on your submarine can fire the probe with any integer velocity. Oh, we got a little scorched earth, maybe? <laughs> with any integer velocity in the X and Y directions. Right? Okay, so that's coming from like a first person perspective, I'm assuming. An initial X, Y velocity like 0, 10 would fire the probe straight up. An initial velocity 10, negative 1 would fire the probe forward as a slight downward angle. So this is basically the slope, <clears throat> right? Forward, downward angle, right? From the first person perspective, right? So looking straight forward. So a positive uh, a positive X is shooting it out the front of your submarine and a negative X will be shooting it out the back of the submarine, rear, rear missiles. And the negative one is up or down, right? Anyway, uh, the probe's XY position starts at zero, zero. Then it will follow some trajectory by moving in steps. Each step, these changes occurs. The probe X, yep, the probe Y moves on the slope. Due to drag, the probe's X velocity changes by one toward the value of zero. It decreases by one if it's greater than zero, increases by one if it's less than one, does not change. Due to gravity, the probe's Y velocity decreases by one. So this is actually really similar to programming a video game where you would have like a bullet that you fire out of your Galaga, right, ship or something. And in Galaga, I guess, or Space Invaders, the bullets go up with a constant velocity. They don't decrease in velocity. There's no gravity or anything like that, right? Uh, but if you look at, say, something like Mario jumping, right? So when someone presses A, Mario's velocity when he's standing on the ground is just nothing, right? When he pushes A, they give Mario an upward velocity, right? But they also... Uh, that velocity changes on an on an arc, right, over time. So it's like, yeah, it, if you, if they just set it to a set number, right, and then, you know, Mario would just, like, go off the top of the screen, right, like the bullets in Space Invaders. They set it to a number, but then they start cutting it down. You know, maybe they, maybe they even increase it when it gets, I guess it would be the fastest as soon as he jumps, and it would start decreasing, but as long as it's positive, He's still going upwards. He slows down at the top of the jump and then comes back down until the velocity is zero again. Uh, so it's a sideways Mario jump. Well, it's a Mario jump in the direction specified by X, Y. It's like your initial jumping power. And then this is the effect, you know, the decreasing down to zero. Okay, the probe actually make it into the trench. The probe must be on some trajectory that causes it to be within a target area after any step must be it causes it to be within a target area on after any step the submarine computers they calculated this target area which is your puzzle input ah the puzzle input is this target area so you are at some position the target area means that you need to find the initial xy velocity values such that after any step it could be step one two three four five you don't know a hundred a thousand the probe's X position is at least 20 and at most 30. And the probe's Y position is at least negative 10 and at most negative 5. So you can solve both of these separately, right? The X uh, changes by 1 uh, toward the value of 0. Right, due to the drag, it decreases by one if it is greater than zero. Oh, it increases by one if it's less than zero. Oh, that's interesting. Or it does not change if it's already zero. Uh, the, the probe's x velocity changes by one toward zero. 
So it's at 20. Let's say you started at 30. It would go 30, 20, 100, 0. Decrease it by 1 if it is greater than 0. Does not change if it's already 0. Okay, so it goes down until it hits 0, and then it stays there, the x. Due to gravity, the y de always goes down, no matter what. Okay, so what you have to do for this particular setup is you you would look at the y. This always goes to zero, right? Uh, so, and the y has to go into, this is your target y and your target x, right? So you'd look at the y first because the y can just, you know, the, the y can overshoot this. I guess it doesn't really matter which one you look at first, because either one can overshoot, right? So if x is positive, you have to start positive, and it's going to go down until it gets in this range. And the y uh, is always going to end up negative no matter what in the long run. So it could start negative. It could start at like negative 1 or something. Um, I guess the starting position is going to be 0, 0, right? Uh, yeah, the, it could go down. X, Y position starts at 0. Follow some trajectory by moving in steps. Each step, these changes occur in the following order. Okay, so you have a starting velocity. You know, if your starting velocity was just like 20, negative 5, it would go boop, like immediately into the target area after one step, right? <laughs> Anyway, uh, the target area means you need to find the initial x, y velocity value such that after any step, the probe's x position and it is at least 20 and at most 30, and the probe's y position is at least negative 10 and at most fi negative 5. I think there's something I don't fully get yet. And give this target area the initial velocity to cause the probe to be within the target area after any step is 7, 2. Why couldn't it be? 20, negative 5. <laughs> After the first step, it would be in the it would be in the right spot, right? Uh, let's see, 7, 2. Here's the submarine. It went up 2 and right 7, but then its velocity got affected. Its velocity got affected again. Its velocity got affected again. Its velocity got affected again. Its velocity changed again. And then finally, it's in the, it's in the zone scorched earth style. But if the starting velocity was negative one you know uh, x of 20 and negative whatever it would be like first step bam right uh just like boom straight shot you could do straight shots in scorched earth too s oh in s is the probe's initial position zero zero the x coordinate increases to the right y is upward in the bottom right positions that are within the target area are shown as t after each step, until the target, the position of the probe is marked with eh, the bottom right. Eh, after initial velocity, that causes the probe to be in the target area. Another initial velocity that causes the probe to be in the target area during a step is 6, 3. 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. So there are multiple answers. Another one is 9, 0. Boop, boop, boop. So I was right. You could just do doesn't cause the probe to be in the target area after any step is 17, negative 4. Yeah, because it goes boop, boop. It went through it, but... It wasn't there after a particular step. Never within after a step. It continues down to the right. If you're going to fire a highly scientific probe out of a super cool probe launcher, you might well do it with style. How high? Ah, here we go. How high can you make the probe go while still reaching the target area? I got it. In the above example, using an initial velocity of 6, 9 is the best you can do. Really? Isn't, is that, in, that's interesting. So you get the uh, 6, 9 would put you up here somewhere. But it's like, couldn't you fire like, freaking like one to the right? It's like, I guess if you want to go as high, you go like one to the right with a super high, oh, it would just fall straight down pretty much. Oh, and I see. If you were to fire, if you were to try to get it to go up, and then like it is way, way, way high, right? If you were too high, it would even though it was falling slowly, it would drift past 
right? And right, even if you tried to, right? Okay. So you got to keep it close. You got to minimize the X, right? And maximize the Y on your initial shot and keep it in there. Okay. There might be some math that just does this. Um, or you could just keep, you know, trying lower and lower X's. You know, I guess start your X at like zero, right? Um, uh, I guess there is some math you can do to minimize this, right? You know that basically I had to work it out on paper, but yeah, you're only, it's, it's basically you look at your Y, right? And the Y is going down by um, one, right? So if you look at the, the, the lowest Y of this, right? So this is negative one, two, three, four, it's negative five. And you look at your current Y, which is zero, right? Uh, and you say, okay, well, your initial shot, right? Uh, whatever the Y of that is, right, is going to go down by one, right? This is a seven, two. So the two becomes a one, becomes a zero, negative one, right? Negative two, negative three, negative four, and then it's in the zone. So you could just look at the Y only and say, well, which step of that y will put it into the y range right look at the y only don't look at the x okay and then you say okay well if for that y will be in range right in that many steps then we know that x goes down by right then we could do the same math and say, okay, well, wait, which, which steps? That's I think that's how we do it, right? We look, we we just make a thing for any given number of y, right? How many how many steps until that y is in the range? And what step that y leaves the range? And then we say for any given x, right? What at what step will that x enter the range? And what step will that x leave the x range ignoring the y range and then we say okay well what steps do both of those numbers have you know in common right it's like well x you know you know uh right and then just combine them and figure out the one with the the minimum yeah the minimum x Okay. Anyway, initial velocity cause probably the target area. Any step is six three. Another one is nine zero. Okay, we're good. Okay. Find the initial velocity cause probe to reach the highest y and still eventually be within the target area after any step. What is the highest y position it reaches on this trajectory? Let's get to it. All right. I got delayed. A few days, I uh, was working on some other things, so we fell behind, but I believe I have the right answer for day 17, part one. Uh, let's see. Is the right answer. Do, 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 do. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> it's almost done. Is it 3160? That's the right answer. All right. Let's go over how the heck we got that answer. So, um, obviously, you saw this, the, the progress bar, right? So, we're trying to shoot uh, into, into a box. And so, there's some amount of brute forcing happening, right? Trying different shots, right? Pew! Pew, right? Here's the here's our box, right? You know, pew, trying, right? This one overshot, okay, right? Trying different shots and figuring out what is the hot, the one that reaches the highest point that also 
lands in the box at some point. Okay, so uh, the problem is right. The first problem is simulating a shot. So let's look at the code for simulating a shot. Uh, let's get that. At, get this sidebar out of here. Get this out of here. Okay. So here's our code for simulating a shot. Right. We've got a point, a vector, and a target. These are some data classes that I made at the top. A vector has the vx and the vy pair, right? So that's your input for the shot. Uh, and then the point is just an xy location. And the target is the min x, max x, min y, max y that defines a box that where we're trying to hit, OK? So when we fire the shot, right, we're going to say, OK, locations, right? Your origin is where you're shooting from. Right, uh, I think the puzzle was always assuming that you're shooting from zero zero, but I made it more general just in case. I don't know what part two is going to say, um, but I want to be able to shoot. You know, define where you're shooting from, right? And then here's the shot you're attempting, right? Your initial vx and vy, and then hits, right? Any any locations that are end up where the shot ends up in the box would end up in here, right? So the question is, well. You know, you you fire this shot. You can keep processing locations on the shot forever because it falls forever, right? It's like you you could just have an infinite loop checking lower and lower locations. So when exactly do you stop uh, checking on any individual shot? Well, it's when the location of the bullet is greater than uh, or equal to right the target. Well, the, the y location, right, is greater than or equal to the bottom of the target. So as long as the bullet is above the bottom of the target, keep going. But as soon as the bullet falls below the bottom of the target, we know it only goes down, right? It doesn't go up <laughs> anymore, at least. So then we can stop checking that individual bullet, right? And so what we do is, you know, while it's still possible that, you know, the bullet could in the future hit the target. We right, we add its current location to the list of locations. Then location.move, you'll see up here, uh, location.move, right? Is you pass in a vector and it moves the location according to the VX and the VY. So that'll move it to the next location. Shot step, right? Shot is a vector, right? So now the vector itself changes here, right? The VX uh, approaches zero until it eventually stays at zero, right? Uh, and the VY always goes down by one, no matter what. And if it's a negative VX, it's approaching zero from the other side. So it's, it's plus or, or minus. Okay. Uh, and then, so if the target contains the location, so on target, we have a contains function where you pass in a point. And it says, is the x in range? Is the y in range? If they're both in range, and if they're both in range, that's going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to be false, right? So we can give the point to the target, and that'll return. And if so, if it is on target, if the target contains the lo current location of the bullet, then that means the bullet is hit. So hits.append that location, right? So we're going to keep, we fire the bullet. Right? It starts at the origin. It moves according to the vector. The vector, it moves according to the vector. The vector keeps changing. And if at any point the bullet is in, is on target, then we're going to have some hits. We'll stop once it's no longer possible for the bullet to ever be on target in the future because it's already fallen too far low below the target. And then when we stop, we say, well, were there any hits? Right? A lot during that path it just took, were there any hits? Right? Uh, if there were, Right, we're going to return them, right, and that's our our shot firing. Now the question is, right, is you could fire infinity shots, right? So we, we can fire, we can simulate a single shot now without an infinite loop, right? We have a condition to end that loop. But what shots do we attempt? We could attempt to shoot from negative infinity x to positive infinity x, negative infinity y to positive infinity y, and if you had all the time in the universe, we could. Um, Right, we could try all those shots and figure out which one was the highest. We have to limit our search space, right? So let's talk about the nature of x and y. So x, right? Here's our here's our origin, 
All right, we'll pretend this is zero, zero. If our initial VX is one, right, it's gonna, the bullet is gonna go one, and then the VX is gonna drop down to zero, and then that's it. it this, it's, a, it's just, that's the end of the road, right? If our initial VX is two, right, the bullet's gonna go two, the VX will change to one, it'll go one, and then that's it, it's zero now, it's just gonna fall into oblivion, right? So let's do one more. If the VX is four, right, it's gonna go one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, then two, and then one. And then that's as far as it's gonna go. So as you can see, your, for your VX, and it's the same for negative, it's just gonna be times negative one on the other side. Your initial VX is gonna determine the maximum distance in X the bullet can ever reach. It's gonna be the triangular number, right? That's why if VX is four, the, tr the fourth triangular number is 10. That's your maximum distance, right? We use triangular numbers on an earlier day. So you can see where we still have the triangular number. Get X triangular number is here. We brought that code back from the earlier day. Um, so yeah, so now we know, right? Well, let's say the box is at uh, 11, right? Right, if the box goes from, if the target is from 11, we don't care about the Y of the, the box just now, we're just talking about the X, right? If the box goes from 11 to, I don't know, you know, 45, right? Something like that, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, it, it really doesn't matter to, to something, right? To, to, to Y, I don't know. Um, then there's no point in trying, right, a VX of, one, two, three, or four, because even with a VX of four, the bullet will never reach the left side of the target, right? It's just not gonna make it. It's just gonna hit zero VX when it gets to 10, the triangular number of four, and that's it, the end. So what we do is to figure out the smallest VX worth even looking at, we look and say, all right, what's the distance from us to, right? the left side of the target, or if the target's on the other side, we have to flip it and we have to actually check the right side of the target. But regardless, what's the distance from us to the, the, the target? And we say, all right, well, it's 11. All right, well, what's the smallest triangular number that is, right, greater than or equal to 11, right? Well, it's five, right? The fifth triangular number would be 15, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, right, is over here. So we know that if we fire with an initial VX of five, with four, we're not gonna make it to the target. With five, we will make it to the target, right? We might make it, right? Um, so this, even though this is five, right? It, you know, I guess because this is the shape of the box we made, this will actually be the first spot it enters the target, but it is possible that it could actually hit the target, you know, somewhere in here based on the size and which number we choose. but. There's no point in trying unless you have a triangular number that's at least equal to this distance. So we can now say that, well, the lowest VX we're gonna look at is five, but this is still a problem. We need this, the minimum, I'm really, uh, minimum VX, min VX to five. But what's the maximum VX worth looking at? Right? We can try from five to infinity, but that's still infinite checking, right? We need to check a smaller number of, of x's, of, v, of vx's, right? Well, this is actually quite simple, um, much simpler than the triangular number thing, right? So let's again say that our box is, is 10 to, I don't know, 100, right? We know five is going to get us in the box, right? Four won't make it to the box. Well, even though we could try like, I don't know, nine, right? Nine, the triangular number of nine is 45. That's gonna be in the box still, right? But even if we try, I don't know, like 20, what's like the 20th triangular number, right? <laughs> it's, right? There might be triangular numbers where the maximum distance the bullet travels is like over here, right? But it's still possible even though the, the final you know, uh, destination of the bullet might be beyond the box, the bullet may have stopped in the box along the way. Right? That's, that's possible. So the, this might be the farthest the bullet would reach, 
with a given VX initially, but it could have stopped here along the way. So therefore, we have to keep trying those numbers, even though we, the bullet is going to reach beyond the box. What? When do we stop checking? Really simple, right? Even 100, right? Well, the distance from us to here, right, being 100, right? If we're not the origin isn't zero, then it wouldn't be a hundred, right? But it does. If we were, if we're at one, then the distance would be ninety-nine. But even ninety-nine is worth checking because that means, you know, after step one of the shot, it will be on target or at least in range if the Y is also on target. So the hot, the fur, the that's really the highest VX worth checking, right? Because if we do a VX of one hundred and one for our initial shot then after a single step, it's already beyond the target, and it will only go to the right from there, and at no point will it be on target. So in this case, the maximum VX worth checking is 100. So now we know all. we only have to check 95 different VXs um, for our shots in order to figure out, you know, all right, which one. All right, so now is the Y. The Y is, is a little more difficult, right? Let's figure out the Y situation. So uh, we're here again at our origin, and there's three possibilities, right? So possibility number one is that the box is below us. And I think if I look at the test input and also my real input, this is the case uh, in both of them. Uh, so let's examine that case first, right? So in this case, uh, basically, you know, you the lowest y worth shooting. Right, let's pretend this is at negative ten. I didn't actually count. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it is negative ten. Okay, so it's negative ten. <laughs> so it's the same as the as the max x situation, even though in the x direction, eventually. The, the bullet runs out of steam. In the y direction, it never runs out of steam. It just keeps going down forever. But the same rule still applies in that the lowest worth trying for vy would be negative 10. Because if we shot at a negative 11, well, after step one, it's already beyond the box, and it's only going down from there. And it would never be on target. right? So we know the lowest worth checking is negative 10. Well, what's the highest worth checking? Well, the highest worth checking, you know, this is at negative 2 here, right? Well, yeah, negative 2 we can try for sure, right? We're definitely going to be trying that because that's going to put us on step 1 in range. But, you know, we could shoot up into the air and have it come down, right? We could do like a positive 2, right? And that would go up in the air, come down, and then it might it would come into the box on the way down, which is actually likely. That's That's our goal, right? So how high in the air do we shoot is the question. Well, it turns out that when you shoot up into the air, it's also a triangular number situation, but in a parabola. So if we shoot into the air with a 4, the triangular number being 10, right? It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, right? 8, 9, 10, 10, 9, 8, 4, zero, right? So no matter what VY you choose, right? A VY of a million, it's going to go a million, 999,999 plus a million, right? And so on. Eventually, it's going to hit this plateau and stay still. And it's going to come back down. And on its way back down, it's going to stop at all the same Y coordinates it did on the way up, only in reverse. And it will eventually hit exactly at the same height that you st at, of, of the origin. And then, right, so it just did minus the initial VY, right? The initial VY was 4. So here, the VY of this jump, this jump that landed on 0, was negative 4. So the next jump after it hits the origin plane downwards is going to be negative initial VY, Minus 1 again, so negative 5. It's really hard to write with the mouse here. Uh, negative 5 is going to be the next jump, which is going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, and that will be on target. Right? So if the whole box is below us, the entire box is below us, the only way we could you know, somehow 
right? Fire a shot up into the air and have it n have no chance of at least the Y coordinate being in the box is again dependent on this, right? If we do an initial VY of 10, it'll come down, you know, and at this point, it'll be at zero, and the next VY is going to be negative 11, right? After it hits the origin, it'll hit, right? The, it'll 10, uh, the 10th the triangular number, come back down, be at 10 again, then go to zero because it's minus 10 VY. The next VY will be minus 11, and the bullet will teleport here for the next step after this step and have no chance of being in the box. And if we choose anything higher or you know than 10, 11, if we choose 11, it'll tell it, right? 12, 13, right? So there will be no way with any initial VY higher than nine, right? Nine is the highest VY worth trying because a VY of nine will go up, right? Come here to zero and it'll be at negative 10 and it will hit the exact bottom of the box, right? So for our VY, the minimum VY worth trying is the distance, the Y distance from the origin to the bottom of the box, so it's negative 10, and the highest VY worth trying is basically reverse this, right? Minus one, so nine. We'll check all the Y values from negative 10 to nine. We already know the range for our X values, and now we can check all the different shots without an infinite loop. Okay, let's talk about some other cases. So actually, I forgot to talk about one special case. Is for X, actually. What if X, right? We talked about X being to the right or to the left is identical, only you flip it. Um, but what if X is, your the origin is within X, right? The box is directly above, below, or on top of, right? Uh, of your, wherever you're shooting from. In that case, we don't need to check any X's whatsoever. We can just set X to zero, right? Because we're shooting into a box, um, you know, there's no chance of it being like this kind of shape, right? <laughs> we know it's a straight line. So we don't really care about, you know, anything. We can just set X to zero, and we know that it's going to, you know, come into the box. We don't need to try. There's no point in shooting sideways at all. Right, we could just we could just concentrate fully on Y only, and you know, and say, all right, well, as long as the Y is going to land in the box, we set our X to zero, it's going to be, you know, it doesn't even if we set it to one, it's not going to make a difference, right? So that's really simple. Okay, so let's talk about the case where Y, the box is entirely above, the box is entirely above the 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 point of origin. Okay, so this is different, right? It follows different rules than if the box is below. Uh, so how do we, what's the minimum Y worth trying, right? Well, here at, at two, right? So let's say we fire with a power of one, right? Well, it's going to go one, one, zero. It's not even going to reach, right? If we fire with a power of two, it's going to go two, three, three, one, zero, right? Triangular number. This is the same thing we did for X. We need to find the triangular the lowest triangular number that's at least equal to or greater than the distance to the bottom of the box and that's the lowest vy worth attempting for a box that's above us right so in this case three right the minimum vy worth trying here would be three okay so what's the most vy worth trying well even if this is at 10 Right, shooting at a four, it's gonna max out here. But if we shoot at a five, you know, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, <laughs> I guess that's not 10, this is 10. But you get the idea, it'll go five, nine, right? So even though a five is gonna, you know, plateau at 15, it is going to, you know, have a little stop at nine here, right? And it has a chance of landing in the box. So at which point is there no chance of, a, of the upward shot being in the box? It's the same as for shooting X sideways, right? It would be 
11, right? If we shoot up into the air with a 10, it'll stop here and then go way up into the air to the 10th triangular number, come back down, go to 10, and then go to 0, and then go to negative 11. But if we shoot up into the air with an 11, right, a VY of 11 initially, right, it, the bullet is going to be, oop, immediately after step one, it'll be above the box. On its way back down, it'll be above the box, and then it'll be at zero. And there'll be no chance of it ever being in the box. So in this case, the max VY we would try would be the distance from the origin to the top of the box, so three to 10. Okay, there's one last case to talk about. Boop, boop, boop. What if the box, part of the box is above you and part of the box is below you, right? What Y, right? What's the minimum VY worth trying and what's the maximum VY worth trying, right? Well, you might be like, all right, you know, the minimum VY worth trying, let's see, one, two, three, four, four, would be like negative five, right? Because if you do negative six, it's going to go pew off the bottom. That's easy, right? We did that already, right? But what's the maximum VY worth trying? Well, this is actually an impossible problem, right? In sort of impossible because no matter what VY we choose, a VY of a, of a billion, it's going to go to the billionth triangular number, plateau, come back down, and it will always make contact at Y equals equal to the origin point at some, right? It's always going to have one, a chance of being in the box at zero, right? At the origin Y value, right? So assuming we've got an X value that gets us in the box, um, right? And that X value sort of, you know, we can just pick, you know, as long as it's like a triangular number in the box and we can get the X to like, you know, stop, <laughs> right? Uh, increasing, right? And then we could just pick a Y big enough, right? So that it, the, the Y is still up in the air when the X has already stopped increasing. Then the bull is just going to fall straight down and it's going to hit zero in the box and you're going to have an infinite height. So this question is broken, right? If you have the box partially above and below the Y coordinate of the shooting location. So you put a special case here and you say, if this is the case, we know that the highest shot we can make is infinity. We don't need to check anything. And I think that the problem would never give us an input where this is the case because they know that it would be broken. All right now with all that math figured out, I think, all right, my gut tells me there's a way, there's like a step further that I just can't grasp with my limited math knowledge where we could actually use those limitations I just figured out and therefore just arrive at the answer of the highest shot we can take, right? Is the highest shot we can take always going to be equal to that like max VY that I figured out before? It's possible, but I'm not sure. So Instead, I've taken the somewhat safer half measure of still doing a brute force kind of thing, of trying all these shots, seeing which ones hit, and then figuring out which one of those had the highest VY, uh, but also using those maths I figured out to limit my search space. Right, So I'm only looking at certain VXs and VYs. So let's see how we do that. Right? So we start here. We got our target, which is derived from the input. We have our origin point. That's where we start, right? And then we're going to try to hit the target target from our origin point. So let's look at hit target. Here it is. Target origin is going to return this list of successful shots. It's going to return this list, and in the list are going to be VX, VY pairs that successfully hit the target, right? So for VY, and TQDM is that progress bar thing, right? You can just, if you import uh, TQDM, Right? We have to pip install it and then wrap it around basically anything that you're looping over right? on the right side of a for loop. It's going to make a progress bar. So we're basically checking all these VYs in the VY range, the target's VY range. So this is all the math I just talked about. right? If a box includes its own origin height, maximum VY equals infinity. So I put an assertion to block such cases from ever happening. Uh, Find the minimum VY worth trying, the distance to the bottom. If the origin is greater, right, then minimum VY is going to be negative than that, right? If the origin is 
lower than the bottom of the box, then the box if the box is below us, the minimum VWAR worth trying is the distance. If the box is above us, it's the minimum triangular number that will reach the bottom of the box, right? I wrote a I wrote a function up here, minimum triangular number. Find the smallest triangular number that is greater than or equal to minimum. Return which triangular number it is. The smallest triangular number is at least 11 is 15. 15 is the fifth triangular number. Return 5. Okay. So then we have find to find the max VY worth trying, right? If the origin is above the box, then it's the distance to the bottom minus 1, right? Because that's what's going to keep us from teleporting past the bottom of the box. All right, so remember it was like if so if it was at negative 10 we wanted to try a 9 right so minus one uh, otherwise the maximum vy worth trying is right the distance here right again and then what we're actually going to return is not the two values but the actual range we can return a range from minimum vy to maximum vy plus one because when you do a range the maximum the right side isn't actually included in the range so we need to add one there and then right we just loop right hit target we're just going to loop right over right this target vy range is returning a range and we do a v we just loop right over it with all our possible vy's for our shots and then vx same thing vx range right if the right if it's if the um if the box is somehow under or above us, we can just shoot straight up in the air. We don't need to mess around with X. So just return this range of zero to one, which is gonna mean we're only gonna try an X of zero. We're not, uh, initial VX of zero. We're not gonna attempt any other VXs besides that. Uh, and if the box is to the right, right, we're gonna shoot to the right. Um, Right, and our max Vx is going to be equal to, right, here we go, the distance um, to the right side of the box, right? On the, the minimum Vx we're going to try is the minimum triangular number that reaches the left side of the box. And then we return the range. If we have to shoot left, right, we flip all the mins and maxes, basically, right? The, we're checking the right side of the box versus checking the left side of the box. And the range is going to be counting negatively, right? Because we're shooting to the left. So it's, right, you know, if everything, every single thing is just flip negative one, negative one, negative one here. Um, right, max VX, min VX, origin X self dot max, uh, mix, right? Distance to target, right? So uh, there you have it. Actually, I think this might be wrong. I think it is. That's wrong. Um, so that was good that I saw that. Because no, I think this didn't bat matter for getting the right answer because in the all the inputs were shooting to the right and we're shooting at a target that's below. Uh, I'm just trying to... Um, uh, what's it called? I'm just trying to make sure <laughs> that we handle all the cases as defined by the problem and not all the cases as defined by the input. Right? So we noticed a bug there. Terrific. So anyway, yeah. So for each possible VY that could be in range, and then for each X in that could possibly be in range, create a shot of that VX and VY pair, a, simulate that entire shot, at least until it falls below the target and could never possibly hit it again. If at any point that shot hit the target, Add it to our list of successful shots. Okay, great. And then we've got our list of successful shots. The problem was asking us, what was the shot that reached the highest point? Right? They weren't saying what was the, the shot with the highest initial VY. They were saying, what's the shot that reached the highest point? But that's the same thing as saying the shot with the highest VY. Right? So we're going to say, what's the shot with the highest VY <laughs> right? of all the shots that we took? Uh, and then what's our answer? Well, the answer isn't the VY. The answer is instead uh, the, the vertical point that that shot reached, right? So I made a function for each shot. Tell me the max height. The max height of a shot is equal to the triangular number of the VY, right? If you fire with a four, 
VY initially, the highest point you reach is 10, right? If you fire with a 9, the highest point you reach is 45, but you have to add your initial position, right? So in the in the example, we're always, you know, and I, I guess for part two, we might also always be starting at zero as well, but just in case, uh, we're going to add this, which is going to be zero and won't affect it. But yeah, if you because if you were starting at already 10 up in the air and you fired at a nine, that would be 55 would be the total height of the, the shot, right? And that's how we got our part one result. Okay, now let's take a look at part two. Maybe a fancy trick shot isn't the best idea. You only have one probe, so you better not miss. Get the best idea of what your options are for launching the probe. You need to find every initial velocity that causes the probe to eventually be within the target after any step. Oh, well, we, we did that already. In the above example, there are 125 different initial velocity values that can meet these criteria. How many distinct velocity values cause the probe to be within the target area after any step? Isn't that just going to be the, the length of successful shots? Length of successful shots? Maybe. Uh, let's just try it. Did we just solve right there? In the, ex in the test input, there are 112. Okay. Switch to the test input. And it says 112. All right. I guess we, I guess we accidentally solved part two and solving part one. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Is it 1928? That's the right answer. We're done with day 17. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to be back with, we're falling behind a little bit, but we're going to come back with day 18, even though today is day 19 already.